Welcome back to this week's Mounting Yard Preview. My name is Bella Anderson. I'm Betfair's Mounting Yard Analyst and Racing's heading back to the valley. So excited. It's such a great track and definitely one of my favourite mounting yards. You get so close to the horses and it's simply a brilliant atmosphere. So can't wait to look ahead to the weekend. Race one is over the thousand metres for the newly turned three-year-olds. So still babies in my mind as they're basically just two-year-olds turning three. So they're still pretty young and new to it all. Epic Proportions loved this colt last start. I had him as the back of the yard for Betfair and definitely interested to see how he's trained on now fourth up. And Title Fighter, who won on debut last start here at the Valley, and this certainly caught me off guard. I didn't expect it at all from the way he paraded. He was bucking his brains off. He was very excited to be at the races, and interestingly enough, he didn't get warm. He just liked bucking. So interested to see how he parades now that it's his second start at the races. We know it certainly didn't slow him down. He was really dominant winning on that occasion. So interested to see how Title Fighter parades. Race two is a benchmark 70 over the thousand meters and a few horses of note at the bottom of the numbers here. And the first of those being Charmed Run. Now completely normal for her to get a little bit warm and be a little bit toey in the mounting yard. This is just her Rousselon. She was a little bit weak behind last start. I'd like to see her a little bit stronger here third up, having a little bit more condition and weight on her to be really competitive with a few of these other really tough, gritty sprinters. And Hissy Fit, I think she could be the most absolutely named horse on the card at Saturday at the Valley. She likes to have a bit of a hissy fit. She's absolutely mental. She is highly strung. She has a bit of a tantrum every time she gets to the races. She gets really warm. She gets really worked up. She just has a hissy fit and she performs very well doing this. She certainly got, caught me off guard a number of times I've seen her, but very normal for hissy fit to get very worked up pre-race. Race three is a benchmark 78 for the fillies and mares over the mile. And Shandon Burge, Lady Court and Lazuka have all looked spot on their last few starts. So looking forward to seeing them holding and maintaining their recent condition. Both Pichinun and Leovre, they both get warm. They aren't great to look at in the mounting yard, but they perform well regardless. So use your form as a guide for those two gallopers. Electric Bell, really interested to see the condition she's in. She's definitely a question mark for mine. Having seen her both first up and second up, she had stacks of fitness improvement to come. So fourth up now, hopefully she's at her peak. Race seven is a benchmark 100 over the 2,040 meters, and it's normal for both Deep Strike and Flash Flood to get a little bit warm pre-race. Don't be deterred if you see that from either of these gallopers. Floating Artist is definitely the question mark for me at early stages of the market. Having four weeks between runs, I actually laid him first up. He was very big in condition. He had lots of fitness improvement to come. He had lots of strengthening up to come, and he was a little bit off in his coat. So looking to see drastic improvement from Floating Artist, and I certainly think the four weeks between runs isn't going to be in his favour. Milford had on top last start. He's been parading very consistently and very well his last few outings. And Sissoku is another one who's just absolutely fascinating. First up, making his Australian debut, this imported galloper. He's had 658 days between runs and he's definitely a key player in the market at this early stage on Thursday. So really interested to see the condition of Sissoku. Race nine is benchmark 100 over the thousand meters and this is definitely the race I'm most excited for on the card. It's gonna be the highlight of my day from a mounting yard point of view. There's gonna be some very good looking horses walking around and interesting, six of the nine runners are first up. So the yard is gonna be absolutely crucial, albeit they are sprinters. So they're always gonna be that chunkier side of horses, but really intrigued to see Omniman, the horse coming down from Sydney's one. Four or five starts his preparation. He's an absolute winning machine for the Waterhouse Bot Stable. And obviously I haven't seen him before. So really looking forward to seeing Omni Man. And Sweet Ride saw this boy first up and really liked what I saw from him them as well. So looking forward to see this entire back at the races down in Melbourne. And Inundation is the one that I wanted to make note of as well. Hearing Mick Price give out a bit of a caution to punters, a bit of a warning as well regarding Inundation and the fact that the team have noticed that his throat condition, that he's probably always had his life, but it has been deteriorating and they've been hearing this horse roaring in his work. It can be normal for horses with throat conditions and they do end up getting tie back surgery. And Mick Price kind of alluded to the fact that tie back is most likely gonna be an option they explore down the road, but they have been a little bit concerned on how inundation will handle 
breathing during race pressure. So it's very different to trials and work. They can kind of contain it and they're not under the same pressure as he'll feel during a race. So they've basically just been very open and honest with the fact that they have noticed inundation struggling with his breathing a bit. So definitely really important to note regarding inundation. And from Mountain Yard, it's definitely nothing I'll be able to tell. It won't, I won't be able to notice it. It's just simply whether or not inundation copes with the race pressure and how he breathes on the day. Race 10 is a benchmark 70 over the 1200 meters and I'm really looking forward to seeing Helix return first up. Having seen him at all his career starts, he's a horse I've absolutely loved from the mounting yard. He's a really beautiful looking animal. He's always had a really professional attitude so I look forward to seeing him once again nice and relaxed in the mounting yard. He just, he just handles the occasion like an absolute pro and he's just a really nice horse to look at. So looking forward to seeing his fitness levels first up. Perel is a horse that I've now laid twice in a row and I think I've been really lucky to get away with laying it twice in a row and it not having won. I think it probably definitely should have won last start at the Valley. It was enormous, basically defying the bias that we'd seen last time we raced at the Valley. So basically don't use his mounting yard as a guide is my lesson I've learnt now. So use his form as a guide for number 11 Perel and Luna Cat saw her first up and she was a little bit on the lighter side so I'd like to see her a little bit stronger now with that run under the belt and a little bit brighter in the coat. That's a wrap on this week's mounting yard preview. Can't wait to get trackside at the Valley on Saturday to do the live mounting yard mail for Betfair. So make sure you're following both Betfair and I's Twitter platforms where we'll be posting the live mounting yard updates. And really looking forward to seeing a number of runners back on track, particularly Inundation, who, like I mentioned, he's got the big question mark over his throat condition and hopefully we see the best of him. He's certainly a horse with so much upside and so much potential and hopefully he can get his breathing okay on the day and we see the best of inundation. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.
Inundation is making his return to the races on Saturday at the Valley in race number nine and he's undoubtedly the most interesting runner on the card and there's been a word of warning from co-trainer Mick Price Thursday morning regarding inundation and an underlying throat condition that he's had and that has started to deteriorate in his training preparation for this upcoming campaign. The team have heard him making unusual respiratory noises when he's trying to breathe during his work and that can be known as roaring. It's all very normal. It's certainly nothing to be too concerned about but the reason why Mick Price has put it out as a bit of a warning for punters is, well, he's very short in the market and also the fact that the team just simply don't know how it's going to impact him under race pressure. It's completely different to track work and whether or not this breathing is going to be a real impairment for him on race day in these race day conditions. Now, the team are really happy with how he is physically, he's fit, he's feeling well. It's just simply this question mark over his breathing and that he's really struggled with it. Tie back surgery is going to be an option further down the track, a very routine procedure that a lot of horses go through. But I think it's just really important and Really interesting to note as well that Mick Price has come out and openly said that there is a bit of a question mark regarding inundation and this possible throat condition that is deteriorating.